the last decade, there has been significant emphasis on meat production and its environmental impacts, including a particular focus on greenhouse gases. Such a focus ignores many aspects of livestock systems, which are particularly important in Great Britain, as they occupy around 40% of the land area, and they're important to rural communities and to the landscape and the biodiversity that is supported there. This work sought to evidence the practices of a particular group of farmers, the Pasture-Fed Livestock Association, in terms of their ecological and economic sustainability. Farmers in this group feed their livestock on 100% pasture, including conserved forage for cows which go inside. They aspire to produce high quality food from healthy animals within healthy ecosystems, which don't rely on external inputs, in particular feed, but also, as far as possible, chemical fertilisers. We're with, with the cattle every day, so you know, we just go by our own um, feelings about how, they, how, they're, how they're doing, how they're feeling, and they don't build up. Um, heavy worm burdens from grazing um, the same bit of grass and um, in, in, in large numbers um, and you know they, they have a very natural kind of lifestyle. So all the farmers in our study are members of the Pasture Fed Livestock Association PFLA. And those whose farm practices are actually certified to PFLA standards often try out particular management and grazing techniques. These are thought by the PFLA to bring benefits in terms of the productivity of the pasture, the biodiversity on the farm, and the resilience of the lays. The intention of the PFLA standards is to ensure that there's sufficient area for animals to graze freely and for the farm to be self-sufficient in forage throughout the different seasons. The certification standards are designed to be a framework that supports an efficient, productive and sustainable system of farming. We feel that the diversity of, of the grassland is important and there's, there's, there's quite a lot of research evidence to, to show that um, the nutrients in a diverse sward are to some extent anyway, passed on into the quality of the meat. So from the interviews that we did with PFLA farmers for this research, we can get a sense of why farmers are motivated to become PFLA members and to sign up to the PFLA product certification standards. There are some push factors. For example, farmers needing to improve their bottom line. Because at the time what happened was um, BSE right. hit just very soon after yeah. and then rest rates went really quite high. Gosh. So we were under huge financial pressure by the end of the 90s and early 2000s. Mm. So much so that we, I think at that point it was sort of one of them moments where it was either radical change yeah. or we were just, what, what we were doing, all we were doing was just working. Yeah. To pay the bank and we're, we're going the wrong way you know yeah. the business was going the wrong way yeah. so we had pretty radical changes by finishing their cattle on grass and forage crops only they're spending much less on inputs well, i suppose Which it was business as well we've obviously grown grass fed mm. just a thing obviously not buying any feed yeah um and being i suppose low input and obviously more self-sufficient there are also pull factors Many farmers have said that they want to farm in a way that enhances the soil, repairs ecological damage, enhances biodiversity and enhances the welfare of their cattle. Feeding cereal to ruminants really alters their, their makeup and the quality of their beef.
Having tall grassland means that species present get the chance to flower and it's good for invertebrates, small mammals and birds that feed on them. We didn't find higher carbon in PFLA soils and whilst phosphorus levels were much lower than those in intensively managed grassland, these differences were not statistically significant. Our broader analysis allows us to see the possible direction of these farms in terms of increasing soil carbon and soil invertebrates in the future. We are still learning about the role of soil microbes in agricultural systems. And whilst we have some useful findings from this work, as with much research, we have also found that there's so much more still to learn and understand about what's going on in the soil at the micro scale. We can see that PFLA beef suckler enterprises outperform the Farm Business Survey benchmarks both for all farms and the FBS top performers. There is also a large difference in performance between the top one third of PFLA farms and the average. Why is this? Well, we can see that the PFLA farms have much higher output per cow. This is mainly due to a greater use of direct marketing and also the premium they can get from largely being organic. The top performers also have lower costs this is largely driven by reduced feed purchases. The public goods tool was developed for DEFRA to enable all farms to be assessed for their delivery of public goods. In-depth interview questions are scored to enable farms to be evaluated on 11 different aspects of farm performance. The results of the public goods tool for PFLA farmers, shown here in the blue line, indicates that PFLA farms scored well for public goods delivery in the areas most relevant to their businesses. You know, we've hurt our lovely planetary home and we need to do something. Yeah, obviously, I mean, it's all about trying to improve the soil as well. Mm. You know, trying to improve the soil structure mm. and the water retention. So as far as the biodiversity goes, we, the worm counts are increasing in the soil. Okay. We're getting snipe feeding there in the winter. Okay. Now that they're up, they've got to be after the worms. Right. We're getting some increased number of woodcock hunts looking okay. that too. Whilst many consumers are very aware of the connections between food choices and environmental goods, as well as animal welfare, many consumers are unaware of pasture-fed products and their potential benefits. Above all, PFLA farmers are very practical in the way that they are innovating to raise their livestock purely on a grass-fed diet. But they are also overwhelmingly positive, proactive and creative. PFLA farmers are experimenting. They are learning very collaboratively how to farm in a way that is viable, but that is also less damaging to the environment and that is better for their livestock.